Good afternoon. Actually, good evening, I should say, everyone. How is everyone uh, doing this fine Wednesday afternoon? How you doing? Evening in here in Melbourne. Sunny, absolutely balmy, warm Melbourne. Kidding. It's freezing. Um, just, this is, uh, you could call it a very small uh, little video of some of, of a particular kit, and there will be more coming through from the brand Dancing Wings. A lot of people see them online, question the kits themselves, how good, how bad they are, what they're supplied with, what they're not supplied with, and all that type of stuff. Well, I'll just be, I wouldn't call it an unboxing, but I'll pull it apart and have a critique on what's inside the box, okay? This one will be of the Griffin, okay, which is a standard uh, two-channel glider, it's actually three-channel glider with motor control. Um, 1500 mil wingspan from a recollection. Yes, 1550 wingspan. Now these these are supplied in a couple of different variations. You have the pure kit. You have a kit with basic electrics, kit with all the uh, electrics, plus also covering, and so forth and so forth. But they are real good value for money, and I'll be keeping the basic kits kits, not the unless I get asked otherwise, not the uh almost ready to fly fully covered versions um you know if you if you need something out of their range like that by all means get in contact with me and i'll see what i can sort out but the kits is what i'll be keeping for those people that do like to build and basically dress it up to their own design towards the end of the build instead of just finding something that's pretty generic uh so without further ado as i would say i will open a box and show what's inside i'll just pause and do the uh, flip around thanks guys Alrighty, this is the box as presented from the suppliers uh, from Dancing Wing themselves. It's a pretty easy box. It carries actually everything inside. In just a case of pulling it open. Open. It's actually quite a nice uh, container for uh, the basically the shipping. It keeps everything nice and tidy. But <coughs> pardon me, Got a bad throat, so I'm going to cough and splutter a little bit. That is it. Opened up. This is what we get inside the box. Not a bad little package. Uh, very simply, I'll, that it's packed in here. Everything's in uh, plastic bags, so I won't open the bags, bags to sort of rip everything out and start throwing things all over the place. But to give you an idea, I'll pull this aside Ugh. so I can explain what you get in the boxes that come through. This is your... Um, you could call it the hardware to put um, the electrics in. You've got your hinges, which are mylar hinges. I do like the mylar hinges. Uh, nuts and bolts, Y leads, straps for your battery pack, dowel for your wing centering, all in one bag. The next bag is, well, the next collection of stuff will be this, which is your electrics. You have four micro servos, plastic geared servos, for the aircraft, so one, two, three, four, they're all there. You have your motor, okay, which is a uh, outrunner, uh, inner runner, outrunner, yeah, depends on how you look at it. It's an outrunner, okay. You have a speed controller, which is up to three SLIPO 20 amp, so that's right there. That's literally just a 20 amp spare controller they supply with the kit. Already pre-wired with your plug for an XT uh, battery pack, which is good. Uh, and plugs for the motors already soldered onto it, as is the plugs for the motor. They are already mounted on the motor itself. So, four servos, and I've got a funny feeling I made a mistake there saying that it's three. I think it's actually four channel, which will be rudder, elevator, and aileron with um, Y connection, which is that lead there, that's your Y lead. So four channel by the looks of it. So that package, that's the electrics that they supply in the package, which is real good value for what you pay these days. Kit retails around about 229. Okay, you still need glue covering and all that type of stuff to go with it. But this is <clears throat> full blown instructions and building a diagram and everything for the actual aircraft itself. It is not a pamphlet where you follow diagrams to try and figure out where everything goes. Everything is marked, everything is numbered, so you can actually build it as per it should be on a plan. That gives you the base for a very good straight build, and it is uh, four-channel because it does have ailerons. 
Okay, so it does definitely have it. So I made a mistake saying it's three at the start. But that's your plan. It is a full size plan. I'll see if I can lift it up, open up a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to have a big hassle trying to put it back in the box. So, yep. Full size, 1.5. Aileron's right at the tips. Uh, polyhedral, very slight polyhedral. Nearly flat, if you want to call it. Uh, there's your fuselage. This opens up a little bit more, but I won't try and actually open it all the way. Wing. Aircraft fuselage, fuselage tail, so you can actually run through it to make sure you've got everything correct. It's not a bad little setup, this one. That's your plan. Now your balsa wood. This is the best part of it. Here's your balsa wood. All pre-cut uh, ply and balsa wood bits and pieces. Fuselage and main sections for the wing where it joins in the middle is plywood, which are those two top pieces there. It's a uh, tongue and groove, if you want to call it uh, assembly, which makes it really easy to try and actually get a dead straight fuselage. That's the best part of it. You're not sort of guessing if, if you actually got it together wonky and it's going to come out looking really, really weird. Um, balsa wood portions for the fuselage and the wing are nearly cut through, but there are little points on the actual cuts, the laser points, where you do have to use a knife to clean to cut and take out the unit without, well, the unit being the piece of balsa wood, um, brace or otherwise. So you don't break it so nice knife cut so it falls through. The cut's not cut all the way through. Um, another instruction book plus stickers and a nicely wrapped up cellophane package. Okay. And in the box we have more bits and pieces. <clears throat> we have push rods. Aha. Uh -huh. Here we go. Push rod is uh, steel with little joiners for the aileron sections. We have uh, steel uh, rods or steel wire as your push rods. That's going to be explained in the instructions, which are inside here, how to put it together. Um, plus, also, we've got extra bits and pieces in the actual bag of knickknacks, your horns, and everything else, and how to actually connect all that together once you've got it uh, inside the aircraft. Um, push rods for your rudder elevator, push rods for your ailerons, that's in that piece there. Carbon for the wing. This is the carbon, uh, basically, center section for the wing that you've got to look at, uh, plus other bits and pieces. There's three, four pieces there, I'm not sure which is which, but I'm just sort of guessing at the moment that I might be way out of guessing. That'll be the centre, and there'll be long sections to go into, and one large piece for the, for the outside portions of the wings. I can have a look at that and have a look. Uh, yeah, there's a long section for the wing, centre section, and some other pieces for the smaller out, outboard sections, okay? There's your carbon tubes, and... A very dinky, nicely formed canopy, which you, once you build your frame, you put that up, mark it, and cut it out suit to sit on top. That's the kit as it's presented. Nice box, if you like uh, looking at boxes when you un unpack things. Instructions, back formed packaging for all the boss wood, so it stays nice and neat. Okay, you have your electrics. Nicely supplied, you have your four servos, which is a good addition. Now the servos, I'm not sure of the power of the servos, I'll have to check that. Uh, motor's going to sit inside, in behind the firewall. It does need a prop assembly, but it does explain in the instructions what size you do need to get. They're readily available, whether it be from myself or anyone else, that's nice and easy. And the hardware, to bolt it all together, do your hinges, all that type of stuff inside that packaging there. And that goes back in the box, gets closed back up again, and it is now on the website under Dancing Wing Gliders. Uh, F15 is the actual designation for this one, F15. So that's a little project for a weekend if you're quick at building and like something that's uh, tongue and groove, so it goes together nice and straight. Glue's recommended. We'll now talk about glues and covering and stuff and radio. So I'll close that. So it just sits there nice. Okay, bear with me for a second. I'll just change my phone over. Love this stuff. 
Alrighty, coming back to the glue and bits and pieces, you will need covering glue, a sanding block, some sandpaper, you'll need a radio definitely to finish it off and um, it depends on what else you want to add to it, stickers and that type of stuff. Now glue, I'd recommend out of 30 odd years building Bolswood aircraft, everyone's got their choice, I'd recommend on Bolswood either C23 or aliphatic it just gives a more sustainable uh, bond and joint a lot of guys prefer uh, super glue because it's quick and easy quick and easy quick and easy but it's a brittle joint you've got to understand this it is a brittle joint the aliphatic is a um, gives you a better bond and a weapon web joint if you want to call it so it has more perch on the on the actual surfaces when you glue them uh, C23, tried and tested, true, it's been around for donkey's ages, it's one of the sought after glues for building uh, Bosswood model aircraft, lots of guys use it, lots of guys also close themselves off into the workshop when they use C23, but that's another issue. Um, and then for say the wing centre section and where the tubes sit and the front of the nose, try and actually use a two part epoxy, part A, part B. Uh, 15 minutes good, 30 minutes better, gives you time, some time to think while it's glued to make sure it's all nice and straight. Just gives it more strength in those two points where they, there tends to be a lot more load. So, uh, recommendation, aliphatic, uh, evergreen or anything similar. C23, which is something that's been around for the last 50 years. And, <clears throat> pardon me, and then some epoxy. 15 or 20, uh, 15 or 30 is better. Five is too fast. If you're not fast enough to get your joints all squared up, you're in big strife. So 15 to be the better choice and just use masking tape to hold it together while it's setting, okay? Sanding block to sand it all down. Once you've all glued it together, make sure you get a nice clean surface to allow you to put your covering. Covering for this, readily available, no issues at all. Uh, we have an, a product that comes out of two different people, same product. And it's very close to uh, the stuff that's been around since day dot from uh, Top Flight, which is which was called a Conner Coat. Now this stuff is very very similar to a Conner Coat. It's lighter than Profilm, but much much stronger than the Solar Film. If you do remember those two uh, coverings that were available for some time, now finding really hard to buy. Top Flight had a Conner Coat and Monaco. Monaco is really heavy. Great for big aircraft, an absolute pain for small lightweight craft like this. I don't recommend uh, tissue and paper. Stick with either anything like solar film if you can still find it, or the stuff that we have is out of Dancing Wings and Hoya. And it's very, very close to a kind of coat. Light, but strong. You can't puncture it with your finger. Solar film had the bad, uh, how would you call it, premise that if you, if you hit it hard enough, you'd actually puncture it. This is better than salt. The stuff I have is better than solar film, and it comes out of two supplies, as I said, but much, much lighter than pro film or anything similar to what Monaco used to be. So, and it's uh, HY, I'm trying to remember the name of the company, I can't remember, and or Dancing Wings. Same company, rolls of covering over there, no issues. Uh, glue, whatever you like, just as I said, C23 or aliphatic. Aliphatic is sandable, PVA is not. Do not use PVA. You'll regret it when you do because it does not sand. So aliphatic, which is PVA with a filler, so you can actually sand it. C23, awesome, sand till, you, uh, till the uh, cows come home. Epoxy for the front and back. Radio system, whatever your heart desires from a cheapy, cheapy $129 four channel unit that's transmitter receiver will work on these, no issues, right up to your mega, mega big, you know, two, three thousand dollar Futabas, whatever it is, makes no difference. Just choose a radio that you're comfortable with or if you have one, but get a uh, tiny receiver because you've got to fit a battery pack, speed control receiver all inside the actual um, cockpit so you're going to make sure you've got room so tiny receiver will be good dual aerial is bad dual aerial out of the receiver is better you've got better range <clears throat> that'll suit and it'll suit any any receiver it doesn't matter what you do but it's got to be small enough to fit so just remember that so small and tiny to fit this and it's perfect um but -ba 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 um uh covering radio system da -da -da. yep everything's done um build it clean build it uh slowly it'll be a weekend project for some people it'll be a week project for others Pick your radio, pick your covering, cover it to your heart's content, whatever you like. 
20 amp speed controller, uh, mini servos, they are 9 gram servos, there you go. Recommended prop, 8 inch, so like an 8384 folder. If you go bigger for a bit more pull to slow the motor down as well, you can go to a 9.3 if you can find one. 9.4 might load it up too much, so 8.4, 9.3, something like that will do the job nicely. Uh, 3S LiPo is uh, recommended, or suggested I should say, so you can go to a 3S anywhere between, now to be conservative and keep the weight down, you can start at an 1100 or thereabouts right up to 1500, but it'd be better if you could, once you start building, to see what the um, uh, cavity size is, because if you buy a LiPo, big capacity LiPo, like a 16, 17, 1800, you might run out of room really quick, so be wary of that. So 11 to 1500 is good. Check the size of the LiPo when you buy it to make sure it's gonna fit. I'll put some recommendations on LiPos that might do the job for the fit into the, whoop, bit of shiny there, fit into the actual uh, cockpit of the glider. Um, folding prop, easy to get, plenty here, uh, any brand you like, a little round uh, aluminum spinner or plastic spinner. If it's a round spinner, Finish everything off, fill it up the front of the nose a little bit, so then when you put your motor in, you've got your spinner on, what you can do is then sand it so it conforms to the spinner and it looks nice. There's plenty of meat there to be able to sand it down, and you can actually always add a little bit of balsa wood if you need to fill it up a little bit more so you don't dig in too much into the, um, how would you call it, into the balsa wood uh, uh, motor mount where it sits, okay? Nice little glider, about 229, um, and that's posted anywhere in Australia, no issues. You can pick, obviously, from the website more, how would you call it, um, direct freight if you want it to be faster, like Express and that type of stuff. Readily available, everything in the box, glue, cover material, radio system, uh, and time. That's all you need. Have a good time, guys. Uh, enjoy the evening. Um, have a look at that, see what you reckon. There's a glider just to take in the back of your car to have a fang around at your leisure. And uh, talk to you next time. I'll have another review, another one of these when they come through. Uh, picking the kits, as I would say. But uh, take care of yourself, look after yourself. Uh, look after your family, be kind, be good, be careful. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.